what to do if you hear a noise like this. Well, hello everyone and welcome back. So, uh, today's video, an impromptu one, but one that I guarantee you another Prius owner has experienced, and that is an unknown rattling, something like this, occurring at various RPM. It's extremely annoying. Um, and step one, obviously, is to figure out where it's coming from. So, while the car was idling, I just took a peek underneath. Um, obviously not while it was running, but from the side and I was easily able to tell this thing was jumping around everywhere And just for some I guess some orientation here. So the front of the car is that way. So front left is the driver's side um, follow the um, Exhaust straight back and you will find not only the fuel tank, which is what this thing is right here um, but an exhaust shield so um, And it is a little scary when you read online people are like um, you may ask, was this exhaust shield important? And it's a, it's a valid question. I mean, it's rattling around. It's barely connected. You can see the bolts have rusted free on not one, but two sides. Our third bolt is right over here. Um, and it's starting to go as well. So it might be, you know, tempting to just rip this out and continue rolling. But you'll see the exhaust is right here. Up a little bit higher is our gas tank. So <laughs> probably don't want to heat <laughs> that close to your plastic gas tank. So um, in this video, I'm gonna show you what to do if you have something similar with like these holes um, where basically the bolt has rusted through um, and that hole is now too large. Um, I did do this one other time. You'll see right up here, um, this exhaust shield. Uh, this one was probably a little less important because you have the engine right above, um, but you'll see here there's a rivet. So we, we used a rivet last time and we rusted through that one and a couple others and it's still hanging on there pretty good. Uh, but this one is obviously a lot louder, a lot worse, and probably a lot more important. So let me show you what I'm going to do to get this secured. Okay, so my plan here to secure the, um, it, it's called a heat shield back up to the exhaust is to use this. So this is really just some steel strap. Um, I'll link this in the description, but it's not as malleable as you might think. It's pretty thick. Um, even bending it is somewhat difficult. Um, but I'm going to cut off a couple side, uh, straps of this. And then hopefully uh, we're able to get that to fit inside. I have a couple right here. So you can see they're really just, what is that, an inch and a half long just about. But you can make it any size you want. Trim it. And then if I go back up here, and I apologize for the small frame. This is very tight um, to fit in. Um, but here we go. You'll put this right up here. Um, and it will basically hold on to a, a wider area. And you can bend it to fit as well. Um, but my plan is to put that back up there. Um, obviously, if you've rusted through the hole and you don't have the bolt, say the bolt has come off or is rusted in place, um, you may need to find a different way to make this work. And obviously, that bolt is going up through something, so there could be another method. Maybe find another bolt, retap the hole. Um, and the same is true on this other side. Um, hard to get the angle there, but I mean, as long as you have material to press to, these should work because they're a custom size. So I'm going to put that right over there. So give me a second to put these on and I'll come right back and we'll see if this is able to, to make it work. And then any holes that do fit, definitely be careful when you take those off. This one's starting to go, so I'll probably put one here as well um, just to prevent this from failing and then putting additional stress on the other two mount holes. So let's go ahead and put these up, see what happens. Alrighty, so something else I did too. So I to break these off, I would basically fold or crease along the larger hole uh, of, and I just would bend back and forth until the metal would no longer um, allow you to bend, bend beyond the stress point, and it would just then come apart right like that. Um, of course, you could always cut these, but I um, went ahead and put these up. So that's what that one looks like now. So it's like a larger washer, but it hangs on there. On either side, you can see it's not quite perfectly lined up, but I let it, you know, go whatever size it or uh, be wherever it wanted to be. Um, then the middle one, um, I also pre-bent these, so it's slightly bent in the center and it curves outward. So I pre-bent that before I put it in because I didn't want to like bust through this very uh, thin tin here. And did the same thing on this one, pre-bent just slightly, um, which you can see just barely there. Um, then I tighten these up, uh, making sure that, you know, like I said, I'm not gonna bust through the, the tin here. And you can see as I tug on this a little bit, it is, every bit as tight as as these need to be. So this one honestly is a little bit loose, but it's also only at the top and rounded. So, uh, but yeah, went ahead and fixed that. No more rattle, looks good. This stuff is incredible, also super cheap. Um, I can use this, do about 
50 to 80 more of these cars. <laughs> but yeah, there's your solution. This is a 2010 Toyota Prius, so you're under, um, or exhaust shielding may look different. This is what mine looks like, but this is a great solution because I know these can be extremely expensive from the factory or OEM, or even hard to find beyond just a, uh, a junkyard. So if you have an aging car, go for the galvanized steel strip, and we'll catch you in the next video.